So I motion into the box. I don't know who I'm blocking. Yeah. And I kind of have to read the defense on my own. Um, so when I get Dan's help with stuff like that, hey, you know, you, you motion into the box. You see it's split safety. You see it's shell coverage. You automatically know the point is going to be the front side backer because it's nickel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just like, man, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, I guess I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, yeah. stuff like that goes so far with my development and just understanding the game at this level. What's up, y'all? You are going to like this one. Sam Laporta, great player. You can tell already. You can tell the the Lions love this guy. I mean, they, they throw him the ball a lot. And uh, last year, when they traded away Hawkinson, people were like, Dan's an idiot. Um, no, Dan is a very smart man, and he had his eyes on probably Sam Laporta. And now look what he's got, and the guy can block and the whole thing. So really big fan of this kid, was psyched to get him on. He did not disappoint. Really insightful interview, and I found out that he was a St. Louis kid too. I played for eight years in St. Louis, so it was fun to get a, a laugh or two out of him on that. And, uh, you know, like just a really, really smart cat. You can tell he's going to have a great career. Uh, here is my question for y'all, Lions fans. You get a luxury suite for the first, you know, playoff game at Ford Field, which is coming up. I'm pretty, pretty sure of that. You're a Lions fan. Again, you get five tickets. I don't want to make it 10 because this might be harder. Five Detroit Lions. Any of the players. Obviously, Barry's coming, right? Uh, Calvin's probably coming. Let me give you, not named Barry or Calvin, you get tickets for five guys that play for the Lions. They're going to watch the game with you. They're going to wear their own jersey. There's going to be chips and dip. There's going to be beer. Who are you calling? Five Lions. We got one of the best young players in the NFL, guy I've enjoyed watching play, Sam Laporta, one of the many Iowa stud tight ends. And uh, he is joining us now from what looks like his house, which means it's the bye week. Sam, how are you liking the bye week in the NFL? The bye week is treating me well, Chris. It was, uh, <laughs> it was nice to step away yeah. during this time. Uh, we're eight games into this, this crazy rookie season of mine, so it was nice to get away. So we talked a little bit coming in because I was in St. Louis for eight years and when I looked up where you were you're right on the Illinois side and I was gonna ask you like Cardinals Blues oh yeah there I asked yeah, yeah, yeah. Rams like how did you cope with not having a professional football team before or after 2016 yeah that was tough uh I root for all those St. Louis teams yeah. um you know the Stanley Cup for the Blues in 2019 man I was right in the heart of that I uh I went to a playoff game that year actually and then the Rams kind of broke my heart when they left St. Louis, but, uh, you know, we've moved on now a couple years later. Here I am up in Detroit. Yeah, how about that? I went to one of those Stanley Cup games. It was the one they lost by like 10, goal, or, uh, 10 goals. It was like, I don't know, like 11 to 2 or something at home. I don't remember that. Yeah, well, I, I took it out of my memory banks too because uh, I think I was bad luck. But, yeah, Blues fan here. Watch the Cardinals. Pretty cool to hear that you were from right over the uh, the border there. But, um I hear, and this is the first question I have, I called my buddy Nate Sudfeld. I said, what do you need to know about Sam Laporte? He said he's got a great voice. Explain that to me. <laughs> well, you know, the rookie skits that go on across the NFL, um, singing was definitely the uh, the forefront of the Detroit Lions rookies. So, you know, Jameer Gibbs got up there, and he did his little bit, and then Jack Campbell sang uh, – Country Boy Can Survive oh, by yeah. Hank Williams Jr. <laughs> he he did okay. He got into it, but uh, uh, if you know anything about Jack Campbell, it was just rough all around with him. And then, <laughs> and then I, I followed those two guys up, and uh, I sang All Summer Long by Kid Rock, a, a Michigan yeah. Michigan guy, you know. And um, I told myself I wasn't gonna half-ass it, so I went up there and I I shredded it right in front of the room and standing ovation from everybody in the in the room and uh i was nervous for it but i thought i did pretty well hell yeah dude you uh i heard kurt cobainish voice 
That's pretty. That's a great yeah. compliment, dude. Yeah, that. <laughs> He's looking around like, well, fuck. No, that's I, I don't know. I don't know if I can have a comparison to any anybody, yeah. like especially Kurt Cobain. Yeah. But uh, I gave I gave it my best. That's great. Did you best. ask Hutch? Because I thought Hutch nailed it, a- and um, the linebacker from last year. Uh, yeah, Malcolm. Malcolm. I love Malcolm. Malcolm. Was up in front of the room dancing. They, but uh, yeah, I got there. Same thing. Like I said, they. They told me to go up there and give it my best effort because that's really what it's about. Yeah. You know, the guys want to see you kind of embarrass yourself, just play along. So no question, that's what I did. That's great, and you didn't have yeah. to be on hard knocks doing it, which is always a plus. So, oh, that was a big plus, dude. Yeah. You've been lighting it up, ton of catches every game. You obviously set like some rookie records and that sort of thing. Um, do you care about the people that think they own you in fantasy? <laughs> Not necessarily. Um, I got a lot on my plate to worry about and worrying about fantasy owners of, you know, how I'm doing in the fantasy football world. That's a little much. Well, they like you <laughs> right now. They love you. So yeah, like it, it all works. Out. Exactly. Yeah. And then of course they hate you if you have one bad game. No so. question. No question. Well, yeah. you know, like last year when you guys, when you guys, before you were there traded Hawk, I thought a lot of people, and that's your boy from Iowa and everything. But I thought a lot of people were like, what the hell are they doing? And you know, like, the minute they made the move, I'm like, oh, Dan's in love with a tight end. Like, he, he, mm-hmm. he loves a tight end. He wants to get one on a rookie deal. I thought maybe it was Mayer. Could have been you. Like, wasn't sure. And, man, it, it turns out you guys just picked up right where you left off la- last year offensively, and you're a big part of it. How empowering is it when a head coach drafts you and, and he plays the position uh, that you do now? Um, how great is it having that voice in the building for you? Yeah, certainly. You know, you have you have Dan's faith in you. You have Ben Johnson's faith in you. You know, my position coach, Steve Hyden, played 11 years in the National Football League as well. So those three guys instill a lot of confidence in me to do my job, to, uh, you know, play my role on the offense. So Dan, you know, Dan helps me with all those little – the details that go unnoticed by the average viewer – and they make all the difference when playing a position like tight end. You know, Dan Dan's great for me in that regard. What are some of those details? Like uh, when you make that jump, I know that certain, you know, finding space, maybe some of the blocks you have to make because you do it all. Like what are those things that you had to work on to adjust to the pro game that are like minutia type things? Well, there's several things to address in terms of like technique with first steps, hand placement, all that sort of stuff. Um, you see the tight ends in Ben Johnson's offense specifically. We're we're running around all the time. We we motion for indicators and stuff. So I I could go start out in my receiver stance. I don't get the point from the center, so I motion into the box. I don't know who I'm blocking, yeah. and I kind of have to read the defense on my own. Um, so when I get Dan's help with stuff like that, hey, you know, you, you motion into the box. You see it's split safety. You see it's shell coverage you automatically know the point is going to be the front side backer because it's nickel. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just like, man, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> like, I guess I don't need to worry about, uh, you know, yeah. stuff like that goes so far yeah. with my development and just understanding the game at this level. Not a lot of motion in the Iowa offense, I would I would assume. Um, not as much. Yeah, not as much. Not as much. What do you think the score yeah. is in that Iowa game this weekend? I'm just curious because people think it's going to be like 13-10. I love rock fights. <laughs> What, what's your score prediction this weekend for Iowa? Uh, 13-10 seems... That sounds so like good to me, nor- dude. It sounds like too normal of a score. I feel like uh, <laughs> somehow it'll be like 12-10 to 10 yes, or maybe. Uh, like, yeah, like 15-10. to 10. Okay. Just, It'll be like a weird number, right. I feel like. But we'll see. What's it like having all those former players, man? Because that one thing when Dan hired and last year was like, bunch of coaches that I even I either played with or for, but they were all former players. Like what's that do for the building? It definitely brings the entire group together. Um, you know, I work with my position coach all the time, countless hours and Steve gets it. He was a player 11 years. He knows what it's like in the locker room. He knows what it's like on the bye week in week eight, how, you know, you're trying to get to that bye week. Um, they're certainly very understanding of, you know, how your body feels, um, how your mental is doing, and 
when things need to be addressed and what can kind of the players can take care of what what's going to let slide i guess yeah, yeah the one yeah. thing i noticed watching hard knocks is like dan's tough on y'all but he also is like real square with you like hey today's gonna suck you know it's He's, we need yeah. it you know and then, that and then you'll get your break you know is it that kind of thing where you feel like you can trust that whatever he puts you through he knows what's on the other side of it because he's been in your shoes yeah, he's been there. He's done that. He understands that a two-hour long practice and full pads on a Wednesday in week eight is not <laughs> – you're not going to look forward to that, but it's what you need to get better, to improve, to continue to beat the other teams in the league because yeah. we're all racing to get better yeah. at the end of the day. You're always fighting complacency and – you know, you always have to look down the road. There's some other team out there doing this. We need to be doing this. We need to be getting better. So yeah. he keeps it straight up with us, and you can appreciate a guy like that. No question. What did he say to you guys after that that Detroit, the uh, Vegas win? Because, you know, like, that that was a game where it was closer than you guys probably wanted. The red zone stuff, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but you guys leave some points in the field. I know it's a gutsy win. Like, what's Dan's mm -hmm. post-game message after a win like that? He said, never apologize for winning in the National Football League. It's a tough business. Um, certainly sloppy details that we need to get cleaned up because when you come across those teams that can really capitalize on the mistakes that you're making, um, that's, how, that's how you lose ball games. Um, so I guess that was the underlying message with that game. You know, you never want to turn the ball over three times. Um, you want to be more efficient in the red zone. So we're going to get those details cleaned up no, for no sure. No question. I'm sure you guys will. And Jameer Gibbs, do you think he knew he was going to get the ball about 40 times? Uh, like, Because I don't <laughs> think we knew y'all were going to go full feature back on this kid. Uh, it felt like you guys were waiting to do that. But, you know, with uh, with your, your main dude out uh, in Montgomery, did you guys get a sense coming in that y'all were going to ride him? I didn't know if – he was. He knew he was going to get forty carries, but uh, we definitely knew we wanted to impose the ground game. Um, the two weeks before that, we we played really good defenses in Baltimore and in Tampa Bay, and we felt that we'd failed to uphold that standard of, you know, putting a hundred yards on the ground and uh, establishing the run, and you know, just finding that consistent run effort. So we felt like we could do that, and heck, we put. 220, 230 on the ground last Monday night against Vegas and golf put like 270 in the air. And <laughs> that's a, that's a pretty mean combination right there. That's hard to stop. Yeah, no question. The two primetime games I've watched you play, you put about 600 yards and on the ground <laughs> against yeah, the Packers ridiculous. And, and the Raiders. How important is it to have an offensive line coach? Again, a former player in Hank Fraley. I play with the guy very smart guy. When I watch you guys block as a unit, and I don't just mean the, the tackles and the guards in the center, the tight ends too, you guys seem to be on a string. You know, it's like it's like elephants on parade, and I'm not talking a boot look. I'm talking like it's a bunch of big guys who know exactly where they're going and you work together well. How important is it to work in concert with those offensive linemen and to have a guy that played? Yeah, Hank does a phenomenal job with the offensive line. Um, not to mention they're super talented. Um, you know, Brad's done an unbelievable job getting the right guys in the right spots. Um, you know, you see our center, Frank Rag now, one of the highest paid centers in the league. He's kind of conducting the entire orchestra with those guys. Um, you know, you see the tackles, Dak and Sewell. I mean, just across the board, really great group to work with. Um, and the attitude that they all possess is really what sets them apart in my mind. Um, you know, you can teach the technique, you can teach all those fundamentals, but the want to, the drive in those guys, it's really, it's fun to watch and it's fun to be a part of. How cool is it to see Alex Anzalone having such a good year? I'm sure he's a guy that you guys got along, you know, coming in and I'm sure he's one of the mm -hmm. main guys that you got to work with in, in practice when you're going good on good. Um, can you speak to how he's kind of had like almost a career year? People are really paying attention to this guy. A few sacks, you know, the coverage plays. What's he bring to that defense and how's it been working with a guy like, because I, 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 when I was young, I found offensive guys that I could kind of hang my hat on trusting. 
And you know, a lot of times right. over the guys that I work with and rep stuff every day in nine on seven or in team period, has he been one of those guys for you? He's definitely one of those guys. Um, you know, the old quote, iron sharpens iron sort of thing. Training camp was, it was a lot of fun to go up and compete against Alex. Um, he is as detail oriented as anybody I've went against in my short career here in the NFL, but you know, you see him jumping routes and playing perfect body position when the ball is in the air. And you're just like, how did you do that? He's well, you know, I noticed your, your two foot split from the hash was a little bit different than your two yard split. I knew that narrowed down the amount of routes that you could run as soon as you broke in with this stem. Uh, you know, I knew that you had to be running this route. So I undercut it. Yeah. It's like, that dude is locked in, man. Like, he doesn't miss anything that's going on on the field. It's been fun to watch him. Uh, really like Alex. How about Jared Goff? You show up. I don't know if you know he's going to give you the ball 75 times the first month of the season. But, like, <laughs> you guys had to click because I feel like that, that, that quarterback tight end and really anybody receiving the football relationship has to be I mean, we see it every week. Guys aren't on the same page on choice routes or the placement's a little bit off or, you know, the timing. And we put so much on the quarterback sometimes. Um, but it is two people working together. How quickly did you you, you click with Jared and, and how has he been as a mentor for you? He's been, yeah, he's been great. Um, he's very decisive in what he wants with route running. Um, not to mention that Ben Johnson is very particular on yardage routes landmarks um which that makes it easy for me it was a lot to memorize at first for sure but i know that i have to be snapping up this route at six yards because the timing of the play if i'm not at six yards if i'm at seven or eight yards it screws up the entire timing and he's going to have to progress to his next option so once i memorized a lot of those details i figured out what jared needed from me and I'd like to think of myself as that security blanket for him. We have those explosive route runners in Saint and Josh Reynolds and Khalif Raymond. Um, but I always feel like I'm going to be on my spot with steady hands. And, you know, I think he can trust me. No question. Uh, yeah. And then the people's Jones trade, I think it kind of went under the radar, but you tell me what you think. I thought when the trade was made, I was like, Oh, they don't have a guy quite like him. And now you have a lot of different kinds of guys. You have Amon Ra who has a skill set. You know, you've got you've got uh, Jamison who's who's blazing fast and he's learning. You know, you've got a like you said, you're a security blanket. Adding that bigger possession guy outside, that was what I took from it. Why do you think you guys made that move, and how does he help you? Yeah, I unfortunately I haven't seen a lot of his tapes. You're worried um, about your fucking rookie year. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I've kind of had my head down, um, <laughs> trying to stay out of trouble and just. Yeah. <laughs> Keep on going with what I've got going. Is there but, enough, uh, enough balls to go around, though? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Um, you know, we can always use another playmaker. Um, you saw some of those trades yesterday. Holy crap, yeah. with, you know, Chase Young and Montez Sweat getting dished from the commanders. And, yeah, there was some crazy stuff going on around the league. But I think Donovan's really going to help us out. Yeah. Um, you know, one more, one more guy that we can get the ball to and it's going to be explosive down the field. How, who's the, like, because you're not having to block them all, but, like, there's something to being on the field and seeing a special player on the other side of the field. Like, for me, it might be, hey, we're playing Randy Moss late in my career, and I'm like, holy shit, or, you know, Tyreek Hill's speed or something like that. But for you, is there one guy on defense that you've seen so far through your first seven, eight weeks of your NFL career, like, man, that guy is just different? I just played a Monday night, Max Crosby. Woo, that, that boy is good. Yeah. Uh, the tape did not do him justice. Yeah. That's what I'll say. When when you see him in person, he's so smooth. He's so explosive. Um, hell, I, li I lined up off the ball right off the tackle the other night, and I was supposed to chip him. And I look out, and I I <laughs> – I barely get off that ball and that dude's already three yards up the field in one step. And I'm just like, Holy shit. Like I'm supposed to chip his outside half. There's no way I can get to that dude. Well, but, it's crazy. The TFLs yeah. that he creates. I mean, he's obviously a great rusher. Love watching him rush, but you know, he's a playmaker that seems to before the snap know exactly where he needs to be. 
you know, like you guys run that reverse or the jet jet sweep or whatever yeah. it was. He drops it for six yards. He runs down the play on the backside. And then he makes the play. Like he's he's that smart, he's that explosive, and then he's a playmaker on top of it. For sure, yeah. for sure. We ran gap scheme right at him the other night, and I I was attempting to block him and he, he shedded me pretty quickly. <laughs> and I don't know I don't know if you saw that clip, but he was yelling, he's like, I'm fucking him. I saw I'm it. Him. I heard it. <laughs> And yep, I was like, damn, that dude is a good player, man. Yeah. And I was like, I just got exposed right there. Well, dude, he gets everybody, <laughs> man. And that, that shouldn't make yeah, you feel I was too like, bad. Damn, I hate to put that out there, so, but he's a great player. A little Iowa talk. Um you you obviously had great relationships with the older guys that were in the league. Was there one more than than the others that, that you talked to you know, picked up things from, whether it was Hawkinson or Fant or Kittle or any of those guys? I feel like I, I took a little bit of all their game. Um, oddly enough, you know, one of my biggest mentors at Iowa was actually Dallas Clark, yeah. who outdates all of us. Yeah. Um, he's very involved in the program still. He's always around. I was always watching tape with him, getting his advice on stuff. Um, Dallas is an unbelievable human being if you haven't had many encounters with Dallas. I played but... against him, and, you know, I never got to talk to him, but he seemed like a great guy. Uh, one of my he college roommates was the tight end behind him in Indy and loved him. Just said he was yeah, great. he is the absolute man. But, um, yeah, it, it was great to go down to George's barn in the summertime. Um, excuse me, that was actually in the springtime before the draft. And I was working out with George, TJ, Rob Tunyon, Jordan Matthews. Um, and it was just great to be around all those guys, pick up small stuff in their game, what they're doing to – you know, stay ahead of the competition, stay ahead of that curve. That's awesome, man. Can you locate yeah. somebody for me? Aaron Campman was one of my biggest, my favorite player, like, growing up. And I haven't yeah. seen Eric, Aaron, Aaron Campman since he retired. I feel like y'all Iowa guys, you retire and then you go get a farm and disappear. Where the hell is Aaron <laughs> Campman? Is he on a tractor somewhere? I, I don't know. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Yes, no, I know Aaron. I've, yeah, he, he is a small group. Um, that works with athletes and I think they kind of break down the mental side oh, nice. of being an athlete and man, I'd have to, uh, I'd have to follow up oh, with you on If you, you ever see Aaron Camp, tell around. him Chris yeah, Long's looking around. for him. He was one of my favorite players. <laughs> I, I just haven't seen him since he retired. The last question I want to ask you, man, is, and they said it the other night when we were watching the game, they were like, Ford Field's been here 22 years. Never seen a playoff game. Now, I know you won't put the cart before the horse, but I feel like you guys are going to host one at least. What do you think that place feels like uh, in January? Yeah, that's going to be rocking for sure. Um, the fans have been dying for, they've been craving the season that we've been producing so far. And the support from the community, all those Lions fans, it's just – it's built up and it's kind of that snowball effect where they haven't had that in so long and here it is in front of them and they can taste it. They can smell it. The kind of season that we're hoping to have. So if that playoff time rolls around and we're at Ford field hosting a, uh, a playoff game, man, you better watch out. I think it'll be a lot of fun and that'll be a crazy ass atmosphere for sure. Oh yeah, man. Can't wait to watch yeah. it. Enjoy watching you play. Good luck the rest of the year. Hope you come back again after a big win um, and keep it up. Yeah, I appreciate it, Chris. Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, thanks for your time.